control. Breach in five, four, three. What's up, guys? I'm Uncle Freedom, coming to you on another glorious and well-deserved day off. And today, we're still a part of the Minutemen Layout series, but it's kind of something that I, I'm sitting here and I'm like, God, I need to talk about that. And that is 10 tools that you actually need as a Minuteman that need to be incorporated in your kit. Now, not, not specifically where they go on your kit, which we'll cover going forward, but the items themselves, so that if this is kind of what you're looking at, you can be looking at, you know, obtaining these items so that you at least have them. Because they are things that I have found that whether in the military or on duty as law enforcement or on a range training or in the woods or hunting, I've used a lot. And it's kind of one of those things that you just don't want to be caught without. So if that sounds fun and interesting to you, go ahead and like, subscribe, tell a friend. The channel's growing. It's awesome. If you're looking to get in touch with me, it's at Uncle Freedom 213 on Facebook or Instagram or Uncle Freedom 213 at Outlook.com. If you're looking to support the channel, go ahead and take a look down in the description box. There you'll find a link that'll take you to my link tree where all of the affiliates of the channel live. People like Dark Angel Medical, Gun Mag Warehouse, Coltac, Dry Fire Mag. If you were going to do it anyway and you use those links, it helps the channel. And for that, I thank you. So tools not necessarily in in the vein of how some people will think of tools but 10 specific items that i find myself needing all the time so number one is a multi-tool now i am not referring to your favorite swiss army knife yes this is a multi-tool but it's lacking one very important function that we need and that is pliers uh personally for me for years and years and years I was a long time Leatherman guy. This is a Leatherman rebar. I adore Leatherman. I carried a wave when I was in the military. Um, I carry a Super Tool 300 when I'm on duty. But I was issued back in the day a Gerber M600 and actually the one I count on on the SRT plate carrier as well as when I'm on the range is this guy. This is the Gerber Center Drive. This is USA made, good pliers, out the front design, which I really like. Uh, carbide wire cutters and strippers and kind of what makes this guy interesting is I've got some now this is a specific version this is the M4 version so I have a little pry bar bottle opener in here I have an actual carbon scraper in here I have my standard file my serrated blade um, but what I really like about this is on the outside of the knife I have a big sheep's foot blade and I have my bit holder now, what I like about this is the bit holder comes in line with the handle, so it functions like a screwdriver. Now, something else that's cool about this one specifically is the tool itself has the option for you to carry a single extra bit inside of the handle. So, two most common things you would use. Now, this is the M4 version, and the reason I have the M4 version is because, well, my significant other is awesome. And it comes with this kit, so I have a large allen head here which is actually useful for some scope bases but i have the basic star bits that i would find needing on my rifles as well as the standard allen keys a smaller phillips a smaller flathead and an m4 sight tool for the front sight this is a part of that special edition that is the m4 variant of the center drive i really like this one i use it a lot and it's been pretty indispensable but a good multi-tool absolutely something you're going to use now next i understand that this has a knife blade on it but to me that is an auxiliary knife you need to be carrying a good folding knife on you now this is a place where your favorite sak could fall in or if you're nostalgic like me you could break out the old colonial uh paratrooper knife with the shroud line cutters it's automatic these things are cool but a good folding knife. If you want it to be more traditionally minded, you can do something like a Kershaw Federalist. That's a double detent locking. Pretty cool knife. Uh, really like it. USA made. But I tend to err on the side of having 
a one-handed opening knife. Now this can be used to defend yourself at, at the, the end if you needed to, but more than likely this is going to be used for mostly mundane tasks, cutting tape, cutting cord, cutting clothing off somebody, cutting a seat belt. There's about a million uses for a knife. And if you have no idea why you should ever need to carry a knife, I am probably not the channel for you. So this is my paramilitary two and crew Carta. Some other great examples, if you're kind of on a budget, would be this guy. This is the Spyderco Endura 4. I have like nine of these. Uh, VG10 steel, so stainless. Really smooth, lockback, tough knife. This one is, I think, 12 years old. Um, you could also go with something big and burly, like a Benchmade Adamus here. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Benchmade anymore, and I have an original HK Entourage here that were made by uh, Benchmade, but this is an auto. But a good folding knife that you can use in a utility fashion. Men should carry knives. Women should carry Everybody should carry a freaking knife. I was carrying a knife when I was like seven years old. Next up, one of the most useful things I've ever owned in my entire life, and that is my fix-it sticks. This is the, uh, so for those of you that don't know, the fix-it stick system, not the normal fix-it sticks, but the actual systems have torque limiters in them. All of that cool stuff we mount on rifles and handguns have a torque value, usually in inch pounds. For those of you that think you don't need that, don't come crying to me when you sheared the head off the screw when you tried to put the optic back on your pistol. Torque values matter. I have run this larger kit here with the all-in-one torque limiter. This goes all the way up to 65 inch-pounds. And then I have the other all-in-one limiter that is the smaller variant that is good for like pistol optics. But something like this comes with the T-handle. It's magnetic. Uh, really cool. It comes with a half-inch socket for you to tighten up scope bases. It also comes with your standard assortment of star bits, Allen keys, and stuff that you would find yourself needing to fix firearms specifically. So these are awesome. These will set you back, I think, 130 to 140 bucks. But I'll tell you, this is a great investment in yourself. And having something like this on you really lets you stay in the game. And it does. I know that you have like double by having this. But here's the thing: I would rather have this on my belt and be able to use it, and then this in my bag, and be able to actually work on my stuff, especially in the Minutemen scenario. Next up, something I don't hear talked about a lot, and if you've never had this happen, you have not shot a lot, and that is a broken shell. Um, you can use the paint can opener. You can, if, depending on how the shell, like, usually when you see people talk about a cleaning rod for this, it is an actual failure to extract. But something you will see is ripping the head off of a case, which would be the bottom of the bullet where like, you know, the stamping and stuff and the primer goes. But something like this, this is a broken shell extractor. Pretty simple. We literally drop this into the chamber, run it in there. And when this goes in, it actually expands through the neck and pulls that broken shell out, gets you back in the fight. This is super lightweight, cheap insurance. Uh, keeps your gun running. Broken shell extractor. Um, it's going to happen eventually. Don't let that be the end of your day. Next one is a pistol tool. Now the pistol tool is going to be heavily influenced by what kind of pistol you have. If you are a, uh, a SIG guy, right? You are going to need different tools. But one of the tools that's pretty much common, no matter what, when we look at this is going to be a punch. You're going to need that, but you're going to need a specific punch. Glock is, tends to be like where this is really, really good. And that is because you can buy things like this is a Trigicon Glock tool. I have a Glock punch and a front sight deal. But another one that's really good is the Real Avid version here. I have a magnetic front sight uh, screw holder and a punch. Literally screws into itself and its keychain and it's freaking awesome. Something else that you could use as far as that is something like this guy. This is the Real Avid AR-15 Micro Tool. I have some scrapers here if I need them. I have a really terrible front sight, but I have that punch I need, um, a small scraper if I should need it, and then I keep an extra front sight tool clipped onto it. Something like this, I can do a lot of work on a handgun tearing stuff down without having to have a ton of gear. And something like this is small and it fits inside of my my uh, my carrier. 
So after that is gonna be a fixed blade knife. Now, here's the thing. One of my favorite fixed blade knives in the world. Mora Classic number one. If you can tell by the coloring and the nastiness of this knife, I have had it for, I think, 13 years. It's been loved on and abused, but this is not where that knife actually fits. So when we look at a fixed blade knife that you're going to carry in the Minutemen scenario, um, if you think you're going to own it because you're going to knife fight your way, um, you're an idiot. Um, you know what? You know what's a guarantee in a knife fight? Everybody gets cut, including you. But having a good solid tool that in a pinch, if you didn't have an option, could be used as a last ditch defensive tool. Absolutely important. But the reason this isn't listed as a weapon is because it is a tool. Part of something and I don't hear this talked about a lot when we talk about the Minutemen scenario is fieldcraft. Fieldcraft is the ability to not die in the woods. Utilizing things like your poncho and 550 cord to make shelters. Knives are super important. You can do a lot of work with a knife in building shelters and stuff like that. And a good solid fixed blade, full tank fixed blade is kind of where it's at. Uh, this is the Becker VK18 from K-Bar. Great knife. Uh, another one that I really like is uh, this guy. And this is the Tarava Jakari Puko from Vera Staleka. ADCR, ADCR V2 blade, steel, full tang. Very simple uh, knife. Super tough, super robust. I really like it. Um, and then tried and true, kind of the SE6. This is the HM version of it. So it's got more of a French trading knife kind of feel to it. Uh, flat grind, not as blocky in the handle. Good Kydex sheath that I can actually mount up on kit if I needed to. But a really good solid quality fixed blade knife is going to make your life a lot easier, especially if we talk about being in the field um, for any amount of time. Next up, I don't have one in front of me because it would take up a lot of space, and that is a shovel. Now, there are really three options that I am referring to, actually technically four. So first, first one would be the Glock E-Tool. It's a fantastic E-Tool itself. We are looking for something small and compact that we can actually use to do everything from build a fighting position to dig a cat hole to take a crap. The Gerber E-Tool that was issued to the Marine Corps, very good. The Army's E-Tool that you can get at places like Sportsman's Guide, um, they're really good. The Glock E-Tool is also very good. Or you can get the Cold Steel Spetsnaz shovel, which I think is awesome. Uh, some time ago, there was a guy who actually won alone, and when he one of the tools he took was the Cold Steel Spetsnaz shovel. That thing is just cool. Um, so that would be what I would run. I typically, I have the Glock one and I have my Army issued one, but if I have a choice, I actually take the Spetsnaz one because I like it. So after the shovel and the e-tool is a folding saw. So there's really only two companies that I will ever recommend for a folding saw. First one is Silky. The other one is Baco. So what this gives me the ability to do is something small and compact that allows me to clear firing lanes. It lets me build veg fans. It allows me to take down wood in order to build things like a subserve surveillance site. Um, it gives me some capability I didn't have before. Um, especially if we start talking about reconnaissance or recce. Recce is not a rifle. It is an actual skill set. And this is a tool used in the skill set of recce. But I, I do really like the silky saws. I think they're good. This is the Gomboy. What is this? The Gomboy 210. Um, the Baco Laplander is really good. These will set you back somewhere between 20 to 40 bucks. They're fantastic. But a good folding saw, money. Got to have them. Next up is a pry bar, specifically two pry bars. The first one being a 12 to 18 inch pry bar that you can use to break hasps and locks off of a door to gain entry to places you may need to get to. But the second one is a pocket size, a smaller pry bar. Now, for those of you that don't know why, I use these things all the time. Even at work as a cop, I use them for fixing guns and getting stuff loose and threading molly. This thing is awesome for threading molly. Um, you can't get this one anymore. This was an EDC designs by Mendo back in the day. This was called the Trek tie bar. So this is grade five titanium. Um, Maverick Customs. This one's made out of 01 tool steel. It's a very chunky bar, but very useful, very durable. Uh, and then this is made by Dragon Cut Designs. This was known as the Pry Rambit. So it has a bottle opener. I can smack you if I needed to, but these are exceptionally good pry bars made out of titanium. Something small like that gives me the ability to wedge things and pop things open that I don't need a big pry bar for. And more importantly, it keeps me from doing something like breaking the tip off of my knife. 
So a pry bar, two specifically, one 12 to 18, and then uh, one smaller pocket size to do some work with. Next one is gonna be huge. And I know in the world of boar snakes, we are all about it, but that is a true blue military takedown cleaning rod. You can get the ones that come from LaRue. You can get them from forward controls. They're very expensive. Uh, you can get the standard GI ones. Carrying a takedown cleaning rod in your stuff allows you to clear bore obstructions, which means you don't grenade your crap in your face. So if you get a squib or something bad happens or you get a rock or stick or something, you can knock it out with one of these guys. So super, super freaking important. Um, I honestly, I don't understand why people don't carry a takedown cleaning rod. They're just important. You can use them. And, uh, for those of you that wonder where I got that out of, this is actually my cleaning kit here. So I carry just what I need cleaning kit wise for everything from maintaining my lights to my uh, handguns to my rifles. Um, that's not to say like rip cords and boar snakes don't work. They do work and they're excellent to have, but having a good takedown cleaning rod essential to your life. And then we're going to go to three little bonus options. The first bonus option is lube and Loctite. I don't care if that's ballastol. I don't care if it is the Lucas extreme duty gun oil or my new hotness that I really like the black rifle field bomb from cherry bombs. This stuff is fantastic. It doesn't burn off and it makes stuff feel like it's running on glass. Um, this stuff's like 14 bucks for this little bottle, but it is exceptionally good. Uh, my second favorite would be the Lucas Extreme Gun Oil. So having a good lube for your rifle and having that in your kit so you can keep your stuff serviceable, not only keeping it serviceable, but some things uh, you know that would have not stainless blades, being able to keep those things so they don't rust up on you. And then Loctite. Blue or orange. Now, a Vibratite's really good. I like the blue stuff. Need to get some more. The blue stuff is really good, but honestly, I have gone almost completely to the orange. I don't need heat to get it off, and it's stronger than the blue. So, food for thought. Number two. Actually, yeah, number two is going to be punches. You don't need a whole set of punches, but having a couple of punches like this, uh, I think this one is an old one for... Uh, the bolt catch on an AR, that's why it's cut out. But having some good punches in the basic sizes you need so that you can do things like knock trigger pins out if you've got something in there to fix your rifle in the field, super important. Having two or three of those is great. And last but certainly not least is two options. Uh, both of them live in this cleaning kit. The first one is the Calbico channel cleaning tool. This is a polymer like lever bar that I can use to scrape carbon and get gunk out of the inside of things like the chamber or the channels inside of my Glock or my handguns, uh, where my charging handle goes on the AR. Like I can use this to get in there and this. So this is by Cat M4. This is the Cat M4 tool. So this is specifically designed for your bolt carrier group. I love this thing. So the way it's designed is this is for your bolt tail pop it on you can get chunky carbon if you need to scrape it off firing pin if you get some firing pin stuff on there this is a bit holder another place for your stuff this is for the inside of your bolt carrier group where your bolt goes into scrape the crap and then you can run a cloth or something in there and get gunk out of the inside or lube your stuff up i love these i don't even remember where i got it but it's the uh so it's catm4.com it's the cat m4 or the ar15 tool super nice piece of equipment um, I have had it for years and it rides around in my cleaning kit. Your cleaning kit should be a part of your stuff. This is a field cleaning kit for me. I know it's big compared to what other people run. I don't care. I like having my stuff. So there you go, guys. Top 10 things, three bonus points that you absolutely should have in your repertoire as a Minuteman. And it needs to be on your kit. Nothing I have mentioned here should be any farther away than the assault pack you're carrying with you every day. It should not be in your ruck left at base camp. Everything I've mentioned should be at the furthest amount your assault pack on the mission, period. So guys, I'm Uncle Freedom. Thanks for hanging out with me today just a little bit. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Until next time, I'll see you later.